now that we have a general layout in our minds of how all of the mechanics are fitting together, what I want to do in this video is discuss a little bit about why the different actors would do what they are, how they uh, could benefit or get hurt from this cycle, and really why it's so hard to unwound each of the actors, why it's so hard for them to unwind themselves from this scenario. And where I finished off this last video, I talked about more cash being in American pockets because of all of, because of essentially debt being cheaper, government can spend more money, lower taxes. And I said, you know, that's more money for to buy Chinese products, but it's in general more money just for Americans to spend on each other just to spend on each other. They might buy each other's houses or uh, buy each other's services. So in a lot of ways, it does stimulate the economy. For any Keynesians out there, the more you spend, that will stimulate the economy. Lower taxes for more conservatives, that also can stimulate the economy. And in general, debt being cheaper, lower interest rates, all of these things stimulate the economy. Now, normally when you're stimulating the economy like this and you have all of these factors, you have the risk of higher inflation. But remember, Inflation, or at least price inflation, is just the price of all of your goods. But notice, we're buying more and more cheaper goods, and interest rates are low. So to some degree, this whole cycle also keeps, it, it, it looks, I guess you could say, the, the surface growth that the, the average American consumer experiences looks very positive, and inflation stays slow. So we could also say money back, money, money to buy, to buy each, each other's each other's services, each other's services. Now, with, with that said, let's think about why the different actors want to do this. So let's think about it from the Chinese perspective. Let's think about it from the Chinese perspective. So if you are China, and you're starting off, uh, you are a, a real communist co country, maybe, 30 years ago, and then you start to have market-based reforms, and you really want to enter the developing world. But you don't have the industrial base in the late 70s or early 80s to really compete with the Germanys and the Americas or the, and the Japans. And when I say Americas, I mean the United States, on their terms. So one advantage of export-led growth, export-led growth, is when you're just beginning to develop, Maybe you have a more, uh, well, you have a less developed society. You have less of an industrial base. So when you have export led growth, you can actually build, you actually will encourage investment in factories that can go and produce things for the developed world. So for, for the developed world. And by keeping your currency low, by artificially keeping your currency low, and l let me be clear, a lot of with just standard free trade, labor costs are going to be cheaper in a place like China or India that has a lower standard of living. So there would be, with just straight up free trade with no uh, manipulation of currency, you would have things that would move offshore, manufacturing and services that move offshore. But if you supercharge it, if you make it even cheaper to manufacture, to do business in China, it'll just accelerate the investment in production in China. So this export-led growth, so let me put it this way. Let me put it this way. Artificially, artificially suppressed currency. And this also happened with Japan after World War II. Artificial suppressed currency. And to some degree, we wanted that, because we wanted Japan to become intertwined with the United States. We wanted it to be successful. We saw what happened to Germany after World War I, where it became it was so economically unsuccessful that it was very easy for a character like Hitler to come to power. So we learned our lesson. We said, you know, it's never good for another country to not have an economic recovery. So we actually, to some degree, many people think, encourage it in Japan. But anyway, you artificially suppress a currency. It makes your exports cheaper. It makes your exports cheaper, and which then encourages more investment in production at home. So then that leads to more production at home, more production at home. And in this case, when I'm talking about home, I'm talking about China or Japan. And more production at home means more investment at home. More investment. If you're producing more in China, you're going to have to build more factories. More investment. More investment at home. And this means literally more jobs and, and to a large degree, capital for the Chinese people. More jobs and capital. More jobs and capital. 
And as you become more efficient and more, uh, as you go down that development curve, you'll become more and more competitive over a whole series of industries. And the idea is, once, once your people get developed enough, once your people get developed enough, you will have enough capital at home. You will have enough uh, of a consumer base at home that some of this extra capacity can then turn back to your own people. That you can then use these goods to sell to your own people to increase their standard of living. So at first, you are building washing machines and refrigerators for the United States and Europe. And because you're building those washing machines, those are jobs for Chinese. And eventually, once they have enough money, once there's a critical mass of, of, of a middle class Chinese, that same capacity could be used to sell washing machines and refrigerators to the Chinese, and it, was and it would raise their standard of living. So manufacturing, so it builds a manufacturing base. So let me put this. It builds a manufacturing base and a home market. Let me put it that way. So this is kind of, from, from China's point of view, it looks unambiguously good. Builds, builds manufacturing base, manufacturing base, and, and, home cons and a domestic consumer market. Domestic consumer market, which just means people in China, once they have jobs and they have capital, will be able to buy the goods themselves. And domestic consumer market. Now, where is the negative here? You can imagine if you are the developed country that is buying these goods, these art, these they would be cheap to begin with, but now they're being even, they're even more artificially cheap. Well, you lose your manufacturing base. So, if you look at from the U.S. from the U.S. point of view, from the U.S. point of view, you lose you lose the manufacturing base. Manufacturing base. And it's very clear that this has been happening, whether you want to point to Japan or in general. We've been losing our manufacturing base to other countries. And some people view this as a good thing. Some people say, hey, we are further down the development curve. We shouldn't focus on manufacturing, since manufacturing always tends to go to whoever can do it for the cheapest price. We should focus on, on knowledge things, whether it's pharmaceutical industry or the IT industry. So there's uh, may, maybe, maybe an argument there. But the other reason why this is maybe compelling to the United States is it's it's lower costs lower costs lower cost so this looks like a negative and it is really a negative on some level but the one i guess you could call it a superficial positive is lower cost for for american for american consumers so if you're not one of the people who lost their jobs at the manufacturing plant, and you're some, you're, you know, the, the great majority of the rest of Americans. It seems like a good thing. Things are cheaper for you. It's cheaper to buy clothes for your kids. It's cheaper to buy a car. It's cheaper to buy a refrigerator. It's cheaper to buy an air conditioner. Now, the problem is. When and how does this end? Because this whole cycle that we create, I mean, it, it might sound good for China. You know, and, and in theory, it sounds good. You, you suppress your currency, your goods are cheap, more production at home, more investment at home, more capital and jobs. Eventually, point that capital, point that investment back at your own home market, and now you are a developed country. Seems to make a lot of sense, but it's, it's easier said than done. In particular, it's not a trivial thing to make that home market be as consumptive or uh, as consumer driven as maybe some of these developed uh, markets abroad. The other problem is this whole time, remember what's happening. You're just accumulating this mass of, in this case, US dollars, and you're using it to go essentially lend to Americans, to lend to their government, and then it essentially gets lent to the American people. And the minute that you stop doing it, think about what happens. The minute that you stop, not only, not, let's not even talk about uh, unwinding this. Let's say the minute that you stop buying dollars, your currency will inflate, and the holdings, these trillions of dollars of assets, these trillions of dollars. So the minute that you stop, these trillions of dollars of a do these trillions of dollars that you've accumulated will drop in value because the minute you stop buying dollars the currency markets will allow the want to appreciate the dollar to drop and so stop buying stop buying leads to drop in value drop 
in value. And, and that's just if they stop buying. If they actually ever try to unwind this situation, you would have, as soon as they start selling these, that would drop the value of whether you want to call it the dollar or the US Treasuries even more. And so everything else they're holding would drop in even more value. So the whole time, in order to keep their currency propped up, they've been buying these assets. They've been buying these dollars. But the very act of unwinding it will, I won't say make it worthless, but it will it will it will make the it will it will make the value of their holdings go down dramatically. So you have a very hard situation for the Chinese. It's a hard situation to even get out of. And it's just as hard for the US because if you think about it a lot of people in the US would look at this and they'd say, "Hey, this is horrible. This is why our manufacturing base has gone away." And it is partially true. Uh, and, and so they would say, "Hey, let the currencies let the currencies just do what they will. Let you know, no more artificial distortions, no more manipulation by government. Let the currencies be freely trading. But what would happen then? What would happen to the United States? The minute that the United that China stops doing this, stops artificially supporting their currency, or even worse, the minute they start unwinding all of this for all of these dollars that they've accumulated, what's going to happen? They're going to start selling US treasuries. There's going to be lower demand for US treasuries because they're not even buying it. They might be selling it. Interest rates are going to go up. Long term interest. Long term long term interest would go up in the United States. Now when long-term interest rates goes up, that means that borrowing is harder, that uh, people will want more interest to lend you money, that credit card rates will go up, and in general, the entire United States economy will go down. Why are we in this recession right now? Because it is harder to borrow, that we were so uh, dependent on cheap debt, and when that debt got a little less cheap, everything kind of ground to a halt. That would be even worse. That would be even worse if the Chinese stopped buying our debt and allowed interest rates to go up. So we are kind of locked in this very perverse cycle, where although it looks like the Chinese are unambiguously, I guess, benefiting from this, they are accumulating these assets. And the minute that they try to stop accumulating those assets, the value of those assets are going to go down. And even though that the United States looks like it's getting their manufacturing base depleted, and that is true, it is getting its manufacturing base depleted, because of this, it is keeping interest rates low. And if you're a politician, you like that. It makes the overall environment look superficially positive. I'll leave you there and let you think about this whole situation for a little bit. In the next video, I'll try to do a little bit of analogy to think about where all of this might go.